You know, Monsieur Foire, it's surprising how few people seem to remember him. Those that do say that he wasn't a monster, more in the mould of a, a hydric sort of an Eichmann. But they all say that he inspired terror. Uh, Rudy, Campari and soda for Monsieur Van Eyck and coffee for me, please. Yes, Bonjour. Yet when you come to ask them, what was Kessler like? They look vague, uncertain. What does it matter? It was a long time ago. Nobody cares. He's dead and gone. The whole Nazi business is dead and gone. I wonder. Anyway, that's what the program's about. We'll see. Why are you after Kessler? It makes good copy. I do it for money, so I do it better than people who do it for a job. Don't you upset people rooting about like this? Monsieur Foray, let me tell you something. Public opinion just doesn't matter. Ignore it. It goes away. I learned that from the Nazis. Do you mind if we go to have a look at the house before we get to the hotel? Of course not. Hello. I'm Madame Durnford. Good morning, madame. Can we go to the hotel first so that we can drop these off? Yes, certainly. Your card is waiting. Thank you. If you'll excuse me, monsieur, I have to meet someone and then get back to the Oh, Of course. <laughs> I'll see you in the studios. Monsieur? It's a beautiful square. Well, I'm so glad we came. Six years since my mother brought me here. We only stayed two, two weeks. Then she was taken ill again. Which was your grandparents' house? That one. My mother and I came to look at it every day. Oh, don't you wish it was yours? No. Not really. I wouldn't want to leave Israel permanently. I'm sorry, I'm late. Ah. <coughs> I've been talking with Foire. He's the one who runs the Condit over there. I told you, Ben. He was the leader of Lifeline during the war. You wouldn't think so now. They were the people who got over a thousand Allied air crew out and back to the United Kingdom. You have to respect that. The bit that interests me is that Kessler used to eat regularly in his restaurant. They could observe him more closely than most. Can he identify him? He thinks so. But he's old now. We'll see. Come along to my little identification parade. You might meet some interesting people. You might even get some of the material you're looking for. Just want to sit in the background, no introductions. Oh, by the way, how did you get on with that financial investigation? You promised to let me have anything you found out. I said in exchange for what you would give me. Let's exchange together, shall we? I can tell you one thing. His financial arrangements are not ordinary. Herr Dorf has some very peculiar anomalies in his banking. If he is Kessler, could explain a great deal. Monsieur Van Eyck, mademoiselle. Yes, and your name, please? Albert Foire. Thank you. Albert. Madame? Well, don't you know me, Albert? Monique. They told me they were trying to get you to come. Excuse me. 
Would you pay, both take the lift to the fourth floor, room 406? Thank you. Thank you. I had no idea we were to be together. And how are you, Albert? Oh, well. Well, not so bad for an old man. Do you still have the Condide? Oh, yes. I have six other restaurants. Candide is still my favorite. I still live there. Can I come and see the old place? Of course. How long are you staying? Just three days. Would you care to have dinner with me tomorrow? Yes, I'd like that. Good. Ah. How very good of you both to come. Monsieur Van Eyck, Madame Dernford. How do you do? Hello. Monsieur Foy, if you'd like to come along to the editing suite, we can organize some refreshments, have a little chat. Thank you. Mrs. Dernford. I'm delighted you were able to come and look at these bits of film. No, not at all. It's a wonderful opportunity to see some very dear friends again. Yes. You must have seen more of Kessler than most civilians in Brussels during the war. Yes, I suppose we did. He ate frequently at the Condide. So, Monsieur Foire was saying, it, it really is amazing that he never realised you were involved in Lifeline. We were lucky. Here we are. May I introduce... Uh, my assistant, Helen Sonneveld. Hello. My editor, Wim Hello. Daniel. Mrs. Dunford, Monsieur Foire. Hello. Uh, do, please, sit down. I'd like you to have a look at a few bits of this rough assembly. Uh, wind down to the Dorf interview, will you, please, Wim? Dorf Industries came into existence like a theny, fully grown. One moment it was a bomb site, no great time later, there it was. Interesting, though, Dorf didn't put in an appearance until 1950. What you're going to see now is uh, part of an interview I managed to browbeat him into giving me. Uh, bring up the sound, will you, Wim, please? Excellent trade in South America. Yes, yes, we have Excellent trade facilities in Latin America. Now, Dorf, it has been said that your name is not actually Manfred Dorf at all, but that you are really Ludwig Kessler, native of Berlin. I beg your pardon? Your real name is Ludwig Kessler. You were born in Berlin. Quite untrue. I am Manfred Dorf. I was born here in Quebec. I've always been here. I know of no Ludwig Kessler. Can you explain why there are no documents relating to Manfred Dorf prior to 1947? No, no birth certificate, no record of parents? Could you turn the sound off? Well, you must understand that uh, many buildings were destroyed in the bombing at the end of the Second World War. And it were thousands of documents were lost. But uh, there's no mystery. Your late wife was Belgian, I think. Yes, she was. Do you deny that you were in Belgium and the Low Countries during the occupation? Yes, I do. I serve my country in industry. Freeze it there, Wim, will you? Now, there's a lot more like that. Now, Monsieur Foire, do you recognize Dorf? Is he Ludwig Kessler? <coughs> He's difficult to be sure after all this time. Um, people change. In your opinion? I can't say. Possibly. Mrs. Dunford? Oh, yes. That man is Kessler. Are you sure? You have to yes, be sure, I'm ma quite sure. There are some things one doesn't forget. As soon as I heard his voice, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. Great. Thank you very much. Now, if you'd just like to go into the next room with Hélène here, there's uh, someone there I think you might like to meet. I'll join you in a moment. That's two independent identifications. Two out of five. Not good odds, my dear. I need to be surer than that if I'm to hand over a prosecution to the civil police. I've dug up stuff that'll make your hair stand on end. Have a look at the rest of the program, then I'll show you the bits I had to leave out. Promise to let me have a copy of your program to take back to Bond. We'll be having some VHS copies made. Wim, see that the gentleman gets a copy, will you? Here we are. Please make yourselves at home. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful to oh, see so you again. Oh, it's good to see you too. Why haven't you been back to see us? Oh, well, you know how it is, another country, another family. I mean, You haven't changed a bit. Oh, have you? <laughs> no. 
Have you been happy? Do you like living here? Yes, yes, it's been good. I've got a 24-year-old son now, you know. Right. Michael, his name is. He wants to join the army like his father, but Stephen said no, There'll no. There'll be plenty to... of time to talk of such things. <laughs> Would you like to help yourselves to some coffee? Mm. There's some cake here as well, if you'd like. Thank you. Hugo will be down in a minute. Oh, I'll bear you didn't tell me. It was a surprise. <laughs> Did he by any chance show you that film he had and that interview with Kessler? It was Kessler, you know. There's no doubt about it. Yes, that's what I said. Albert wasn't sure. I said I wasn't prepared to be definite. But, uh, in any event, what does it matter? Well, I think it matters. I thought he was dead. Ah, here you are. I'm glad to see Elaine is looking Thank after you. you. Uh, shall we take our coffee and things round the table? We can have a chat. I... Mrs. Dunford, do please sit down. Monsieur Poiret. Thank you. Here Thank you go, Thank you. Thank you. Will you sit down? Have you had some chocolate cake? Yes, I oh, see. Yes, sure. Why does she want to speak to you? Oh, Mrs. Dunford, was that a nice surprise? One. One. Hugo? Yes. yes. There's a Miss Rock wanting to see you. Well, who is she? Do we know her? No, but she says she got a letter you sent to her mother in Israel. Yes. Oh, I see. All right. Well, stick her in the editing suite. I'll be along in a minute. Could you send her up to the fourth floor? I'll meet her at the lift. Right. May one ask what of this is really in it? Yes, of course you may. As you uh, probably know, I do a regular TV program called In Our Time. It tries to be investigative, controversial, looks into contemporary questions, matters of public interest and so on. Now, the programme that is going out on Wednesday examines the whole question of Nazi war criminals, which has come into focus again in several countries. Well, isn't it a bit late? Shouldn't we all try to forget the war? <laughs> I've been scratching around this subject for years. There's a great deal more material than you've seen. You wouldn't believe what still goes on. In Europe and South America, I kid you not, Nazism exists today like a giant mafia throughout Germany and Europe. I can't oh. believe that. <laughs> you tune into the programme, my friend, it'll make your hair curl. Here you go. She's here. All right. Look, I'll just get rid of this girl and I'll be right back. Um, do. Please help yourselves, won't you? Is that Mel Kessler? Larson. Hello. I'm Hugo van Eyck. I don't think we've met. I can give you a couple of minutes. Michal Rack. Hmm? From Tel Aviv. Ah. You wrote to my mother several weeks ago. It was about the man Kessler. Well, to be honest, we wrote to many people who had possibly suffered due to this man. Oh, I see. Yes, we wrote a great many letters. Your letter did not say why you were inquiring, but I found out. You think Kessler did not die? Well, I'm sure he didn't, but unfortunately I can't prove it. I want to know. It is important to me. Because of your mother? Kessler sent my mother and her family to Dachau. Ah. Uh, have you got the Israeli file, Ellen? Did your mother tell you that? Yes, my mother survived. Mm. You see, he wanted their house. What did you say your name was? Michal Rak. Rak. He wanted their house near the Grand Place for his clerks to work in. My family were Jewish, so instead of just having my mother, her two brothers and my grandparents thrown out onto the street, he sent them to Dachau. Was your mother the only one that survived? I don't think she ever really left Dachau. How do you mean? You know the old story. She watched her baby brother's head being smashed to a pulp by a guard. She found that one of the bodies that she was loading into a furnace was that of her father. How old was your mother when she was taken? Seventeen. After her parents and brothers were all dead, she managed to keep alive because she was young and could sell her sex to the guards for extra food. I see. She died last March. Ah. I buried her in the war cemetery outside Tel Aviv. I found your letter among her things in the sanatorium. What happened to your father? I never knew him. I don't think my mother even knew his name. Mm. She spent most of her life in the asylum in Tel Aviv. For a short while, she lived in a kibbutz. And when was that? At the time of the suits operation. That's when I was conceived. Why did she leave the kibbutz? After she left Dachau and came to Israel, she was never truly sane for more than a few weeks at a time. While she was pregnant with me, they had to send her back to the asylum. She was still there when she died. Father, Herr Leitgeber wishes to speak to you. He's important and urgent. Oh, very well. 
Excuse me, I shan't be a moment. But surely you don't fly it. Oh, you mean because of this? I was flying Junkers 88s for two years after this happened. <laughs> I was the original automatic pilot. <laughs> I'll come straight to the point, Herr Director. The bank is of the opinion that someone has been investigating your accounts. Can you be sure about this? Oh, reasonably. Bankers are aware a woman of their clients is being investigated. It seldom happens to someone of your status, Herr Director. Why should there be a search? Your creditworthiness is obvious. But it has happened. Excuse me. There's no means of checking the source of this unwarranted intrusion into private affairs. I have nothing to hide, as you must know, but I rather resent that it should happen. Indeed, indeed. We were first alerted to the possibility by Becker and Seaberg in London. British bankers are highly sensitive in such things. And we feel that all eight accounts with us, both private and company accounts, and the Handels Bank in Amsterdam, have been investigated. I imagine that such an investigation could only happen through an official source. In your case, sir? Yes. Well, is this official or social? Does it make that much difference? No, but if it's social, we'll go for a drink. Well, actually, it's official, but not terribly so, if you follow me. No, but don't keep me in suspense. It's your area, Tom. We want your West German pals to do a bit of sniffing for us. Oh, yes. You'd better have a look at this. It's some interview stuff for a Belgian TV programme. BRT sent it to the BBC for comment and help with archive film, investigative journalism, that sort of thing. I just had it slung at me by the JIC. Anybody we know? Yes and no. By which I mean we know the man didn't know he was possibly a war criminal and a Nazi. Rather embarrassing. I didn't think anybody cared. No, this one's a bit different. He's an industrialist bigwig. Government does a lot of business with his organisation. Last year we gave permission for him to build a factory here in the UK. It's all big egg on FaceTime. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I can't actually touch it, if you follow me. Officially, I mean. Can you push the bait into your friend's court, possibly? Mm-hmm. You want the juries to put their house in order? Yeah, something like that. Can you talk to your opposite number and get him organised while the water is still warm? They seem to be on the fringe, as it is. Well, I'll have a look at your stuff and see what I can do. Bye, Tom. Bye-bye. I don't care what you say, Mara, I am being investigated. Well, it's not the Bureau. I'd know, I assure you. I want to know if there's anything official about it. Are you sure you're being investigated? I've been around long enough to know by instinct. But there have been questions asked. My bank have said they think it's happening. The question is who? And that question must be followed by why and how much do they know? Has anyone got a reason? No, to my mind, there's only one answer. You remember that television interview I gave to that Belgian, Van Eyck? Well, he thinks he's discovered my identity, but can't prove it. I sensed at the time he wasn't going to leave the matter there. It's my guess that he's in touch with someone here in the Bureau, someone who's started these inquiries. Mm -hmm. Please, check it out, Mara. <laughs> And if it is one of your people, get him off our back. But won't that seem suspicious in view of the interview they've got? Then it's up to you to see that it's done without suspicion. Isn't it, Mara? Mara is not the man he once was. We might have to think of replacing him. Mm. Have your people in Brussels managed to do anything about that television interview? No. What about the man, Van Eyck? It is not so easy with a well-known personality. It might prove dangerous. 
And when the program goes out in Belgium tonight? Uh, make sure that you are away somewhere and cannot be called for interviews. They can have no evidence that would satisfy a court. In a couple of months or so, no one will even remember the name of the program, let alone your part in it. I just wish I knew exactly what this program was about. I will try to find out before you leave for England. In the meantime, I think you should stay away from the factory. You know as well as I do that the moment the spotlight is on him, he'll just disappear into the woodwork. There is months of research sitting up there in those files, these spools of tape. When this program goes out tonight, it's going to knock them sideways, and that means it's good for another two, maybe three programs. I'm going to milk it, and I'm not having anyone homing in on my work, understand? You don't care what that man has done to my family in thousands like that. Look, grow up, love. I care about making the best possible TV programs about subjects I think interest people. Personal crusades against a bunch of geriatric Nazis just don't ring the cash register. Wim, see if you can make him drop his eyes when I ask him about Russell, eh? Hmm? Back are you still here? Just tell me where he lives. Look, I have to take this program to be done. I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you Dorf's address. In return, you will give me any information you find to link him to Kessler, right? That's a deal. The deal includes you giving me everything before I give you anything other than this basic info sheet on Dorf, which Ellen will photocopy for you. Now, will you please get the hell out of here? I have work to do. Thank you. Good evening, Colonel. I'll tell Father you're here. Thank you. Father? Colonel Rockett's here. Did you succeed? Partially. I managed to get hold of a VHS of the programme material being transmitted in Belgium tonight. France. And you want to see it now? Yes, yes, of course. We'll watch it in the study. that fascism may once again be rising in certain areas of Europe, threatening the peace and stability of government, posing a menace to minority groups such as the Jews, who have already suffered so much during the last half century. Is it a question of certain elements among the young wishing to assert themselves under the guise of National Socialism? Is it the latter-day writhings of the old Nazi guard who survived the demise of Hitler's Germany? Or is it a deeply felt and deeply concealed wish of those who once supported the regimes of Hitler, Mussolini and Franco that the triumphs and obvious benefits wrought by dictatorships outweigh the curtailing of human rights and freedoms? We will be speaking with at least one important German industrialist, a well-known figure throughout the West, whose background may not be all that it seems. Just outside of Buenos Aires, there is a township called Legasca, where there's a small community of ex-Nazis living in modest circumstances. They speak German. Most of the town speaks German. There we found Karl Gottlieb Grau, Hauptschaftführer in Hitler's SS, former second-in-command of Maginet concentration camp, where he was known as the Swinger. 
a man whose vile practice it was to pick up little children and small babies by their ankles and dash their brains out against the nearest wall. Hot off your Gottlieb Brown. No, no, I am not. Who are you? Are you not Carl Gottlieb Brown? No, 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 no. I am not. I don't wish to speak to Is you. Is it not a fact that you are second in command of Mercenary Concentration? No, 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 no. Please, you are mistaken. I don't know. No. I'm not mistaken. You are Carl Gottlieb Brown, otherwise known as the Swinger. No. No, 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 no. You are thinking You were called the Swinger because you used to pick up small babies by the ankles and dash their brains out against the wall. No, no, oh, no. Please, 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 you are mistaken. This, uh, this was another man. A man with a, a name like mine. Uh, drown, drown, you know. No, I, uh, I don't remember anyone. I was not in Marginet very long. Are you aware that the room is to have you extradited from Argentina? Right? From Argentina. No, no, please. please and and that you may have to stand, stand trial as a law criminal. That was someone else. I am standing now in front of the central office block of Dorf Industries in Krefeld. This multi-million, multinational organization, one of the largest manufacturers of plastics, pharmaceutical compounds and explosives in Europe today. It is apparently owned and run by Manfred Dorf, a highly respected citizen of West Germany with business interests in Switzerland, Holland, Austria and the UK. But where did the money come from that built this industrial giant? Where, in point of fact, did Herr Dorf come from? In Belgium, the older generation have good reason to remember a certain SS Standartenführer, who was in charge of internal security throughout the occupation. His name was Kessler. Certain links, certain coincidences, made us decide to have a closer look at Herr Dorf in Krefeld. We were granted an interview, during which I made it my business to ask some unexpected questions. Herr Dorf, it has been said that your name is not actually Manfred Dorf at all, but that you are really Ludwig Kessler, native of Berlin. I beg your pardon? Your real name is Ludwig Kessler, and you were born in Berlin. Uh, it's quite untrue. I am Manfred Dorf. I was born here in Krefeld. I've always lived here. I know of no Ludwig Kessler. Can you explain why there are no documents relating to Manfred Dorf prior to 1947? No, no birth certificate, no record of parents? Well, you must understand that uh, many buildings were destroyed in the bombing at the end of the Second World War. And literally thousands of documents were lost and burnt out. But there's no mystery. future programs to the continuation of our search. Join us again next week for another program on a major issue in our time. So he got away with it. Well, what does it matter? There are other things now. That man was Kessler, and he should be made to pay for what he did. I wonder. He was fighting for his country in his own way. I don't think any of us have the right to accuse him. Albert, he had hundreds of people killed. Well, so did every general in the war. On both sides. Are you saying Nuremberg and all that was a farce? Well, what were we supposed to do? Oh, don't let's quarrel about things long past. Now, look, I've been saving this for a very special occasion, and this is it. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. You haven't changed. <laughs> anyway, perhaps it wasn't Kessler at all. It was him. I agree. It was him. We may all be making a terrible mistake. 
Anyway, what does it matter? It's too late. The time to punish is not over a quarter of a century after the event. You just want to forget it? Well, I don't want to forget it, Natalie. It's just, it's just that, well, oh, don't ask me. No. I'll ask the survivors of Auschwitz and Belsen. I don't think you'll find much inclination there to forgive and forget. And I don't blame them. I can never forget. This has depressed us all quite enough. Mm. Now let's enjoy this good cognac. Natalie, money to you. And you. And you. And absent friends. Absent friends. But surely you can lean on him a little. Oh, he may enjoy public popularity, but after all, he's only a glorified journalist. It is too dangerous. You know as well as I do, Manfred, the security of the organization must come first. And what about the individual? What about me? I have taken years to build up this, my industries. It's not a little thing. It is not a little sum the organization has contributed to set it up. Time you went to Earth, Manfred. Disappear for six months, close the house tonight, go to the country, to a hotel, your house, anywhere. No. No, I'm due in London at the trade conference next week. I shall go as planned and stay here until I go. And if the press pick it up, it becomes official? Then you, my dear Hans, would have to instruct the Kameraden to get me out. Which you will do because I have the key to the money box. And if I have to go, it comes with me. With me, Hans. And nobody will be able to touch it without my agreement. Are they alone? Well, she's only set off one alarm. But I have a word with Carl. Get him to give me a hand. Find out who it is. I'll tell father. Carl, take a look around the back of the house. There's somebody prowling around the ground. What are you doing here? I came to see her door. Legitimate visitors use the front door. Go and tell her door if we have an intruder. Put your hands on that table. Hotel Listerman. Mikael Rach. Chu. going on out there? I think she got away. She was Jewish. That girl, her name was Mikhail Rack. She had an Israeli passport. D did you find out anything else about her? She got away in a, a Belgian registered car, DXH something or other. And that was all, was it? No, I found a room key on her from the Hotel Listerman. Go on. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. I think this is for Maura to attend to. Oh, 
Maura? Dorf. Now listen carefully. An attempt has just been made to get into my house by an Israeli girl. Exactly. Israeli. She was driving a car with a Belgian license plate beginning with the letters DXH. I agree, from Belgium it's too much of a coincidence. I'll expect your men in half an hour. I suggest you do exactly that. List on Rallon Hotel is the one by the station, is it? Yes, yes, I think so. And why are the Israelis after you, Manfred? You didn't persecute the Jews, as far as I remember. No, I don't see that as a motive. No, the fact that this girl has come from Belgium implies a connection with this Van Eyck. We really must do something about him. It's the best lead we've had, Carl. Kessler's a big wig, we know he is. We just bide our time and watch. He'll lead us straight to the camera, and work here. And then we can break them once and for all. Yes, well, that will take more than you or I, Richard. Bauer, you have a call for me. Ah, put it through on Scrambler 38, will you please? Bauer? Hello, Tom. Richard, has the Van Eyck Dorf interview been transmitted yet? Yes, it went out on BRT last night. I understand it caused quite a stir. Tell me, is your department officially interested enough to do anything about this? I can't answer that one. Why not? Let me call you back when I have some more information, which may not be all that long. Is there anything I can do to help? No. I have a meeting with the producer of the program. That, plus what we have in our own files, may be quite a bit. If you get an official go-ahead, you will let me know, won't you? Yes, I will. Bye. Tom Deakin, MI6, London. Wanted to know if I'd seen the BRT thing. And there's another thing. Well? My calls are being monitored. You can't tell. It is impossible to know. I can tell. I can feel it in my neck. Mr. Bauer? Bauer? Bauer, I've had some other reports of you. Yes, sir. Fine, if we were to discuss them. Not at all, sir. When did you be free? I'll come along right away. <laughs> that didn't take long. I've been watching your work in this department with some interest. You're keen, efficient, well liked by your colleagues and by those with whom we cooperate abroad. That's good. Excellent. But sometimes uh, we allow our enthusiasm to persuade us to a course of action which, uh, without knowing it, is uh, not wished by our superiors. A uh, cigarette. Have one of these. They're not uh, very heavily scented. I have them made up in London. Thank you. Uh, no, I don't, sir. Very well, sir. Now, you've uh, been pursuing the case of uh, a Manfred Dorf. May I ask why? He was put forward in a television interview as being ex-SS war criminal Ludwig Kessler. It seemed to me a matter for investigation, so I took the normal investigative steps. Unfortunately, Another section of our department is interested in this, uh, and in other matters. And they are extremely angry that a member of my staff should, without consulting anyone, have prejudiced their case by ill-considered and precipitate action. My dear Richard, you put me in a most difficult position. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't know. This man, Dorf, is Kessler. It's very much a matter for this bureau, surely. 
We do not pursue war criminals long after the statute of limitations has passed. It's a waste of time and money. I was merely trying to keep the files up to date. Well, I think in view of the inevitable press intervention that it might be as well if you took your annual leave. We'll make it up to two months. That'll give it all time to blow over. Save us a lot of embarrassment, eh? Well, I don't really want to go on leave, sir. My dear Richard, I'm not suggesting you go on leave. I'm ordering you to. If the ministers get wind of this, they'll be all hell to pay, and I don't want uh, members of my staff on the carpet now, do I? Uh, from tomorrow. Right, sir. Belgian papers are full of it. Look. Say where her dwarf is. Sorry, he's gone to the country. Her dwarf and Frau Dorf have gone away. I have no idea when they propose to return. I can give you no more information. Do you not leave a message? There's nothing I can tell. Oh, where is her dwarf now? I'm sorry, I'm not able to see. to have left. The place is surrounded by reporters. Yes, I'm certain. Uh, I'm going to drive out to the factory and check. If he's not there, we must assume he's gone out to the country address. At least it's worth a try. Right. I'll pack our stuff and settle the bill. See you in about half an hour? Half an hour. Don't go to sleep. Bye. I couldn't go, not without saying goodbye. Come back. Bring Stephen and, and your son next time. We have plenty of room. There didn't seem to be much time. It, everything went so quickly. Director Mara, please, head off. Mara, have you seen the Belgian papers this morning? Well, I should be extremely upset if anything like that appeared in our press. Yes, I think you'd better do that. Uh, have you managed to trace that Israeli girl yet? Shall I contact Colonel Rookett for you? No, no, I'll do that. 
Please let Franz go with you everywhere now. Don't be so silly. If anything happened to you, there's no one else who has access to the Swiss accounts. Don't you worry about that. I'm not exactly new to living under difficult conditions. You're an old man. And old men make mistakes. A camarade and look like that. The camarade and Wecker are all old men. They still hold Germany's destiny. And control much more than you or anyone else imagines. Don't forget that. You would be foolish to do so. What happens if they do get to you? The Bureau decides to make you a scapegoat. Who'll make the money available to them? To us? That contingency is taken care of. There's no need to concern yourself or your friends. Why not? Because whatever funds are available go directly to the Kameradenwerker controllers. Your friends do not come into it. We're the only active organisation to lead Germany back to National Socialism. Do you think those old fools living in Brazil and Paraguay ever going to do anything? Oh, they're toothless old refugees pretending to be Hitler's old guard. Waiting for der Tag that will never come. Waiting for their Reichsleiter to lead Germany back to supremacy. They're so stupid. You were happy enough to be part of it? Not so many years ago? Oh, but it was, Father. Light years ago. There are young men in Germany who are not talking of the old days and crying over their uniforms. Is that what you think of me? Not you. Not the Colonel. You're both different. The young people worship you and Colonel Rockett. Forget the old guard. Join the young ones. Lead us. Ingrid. Your friends doubtlessly mean well, but they are children without purpose, without faith. Throwing bombs, killing a few Jews, hijacking planes, making hostages of old men. These are the trappings of foolishness. They are pointless, senseless, futile. Your brave young friends are no better and no different from the Bader Meinhof lunatics. If you imagine a new Germany will grow from such beginnings, then you are not my daughter. And I believe that you are. Thank you. 